This year, the largest field of UTV racers ever assembled descended upon Laughlin, Nevada for the first annual Polaris Razor UTV World Championship, presented by UTVUnderground.com. Over 150 of the world's top UTV race teams came to battle for $100,000, cash and prizes, and the ultimate bragging rights to be named a world champion. These off-road warriors went door to door in front of a crowd of thousands and proved that the UTV industry has now come of age. The UTV World Championship was the brainchild of UTV Underground and Mad Media. The goal was to create a unique standalone World Championship event that would draw the best drivers and teams from around the planet and create a rallying point for the entire UTV industry. More than just a race, the UTV World Championship was a four-day off-road festival that featured a massive gathering of the industry's premier manufacturers, parts makers, and professional athletes, all ready to make their mark on a worldwide stage. The event showcased a UTV business summit filled with the best and brightest minds in the industry. The side-by-side -side performance family fun poker run which let the public drive their UTVs on the actual race course. The Polaris Razor Experience Demo Rides that put newcomers and veteran UTV riders in the latest Polaris machines, and a massive contingency gathering of vendors at Harris Hotel and Casino along the beautiful Colorado River. Supercross has the Monster Cup. NASCAR has the Daytona 500. Off-road racing, the Mint 400. Now, the UTV industry as the Polaris Razor UTV World Championship. Currently, there are two types of off-road UTV racing. Desert racing, which is huge in the southwest United States and features long point-to-point -point races in the deserts of Nevada, California, and Arizona. And short course racing, which is a motocross-style track race and can feature as many as 20 machines battling side-by-side -side for multiple laps. The UTV World Championship featured championship races for both the desert and short course disciplines, as well as a Youth Razor 170 championship race for the kids. The massive field of competitors came to battle this year for the biggest prize pool in the sports history, and brand new 2015 Polaris Razor XP1000s for each of the overall champions. When the call went out to the UTV industry to rally in Laughlin, Nevada, the entire off-road family showed up in full force. Hundreds of vendors gathered and greeted enthusiasts, showing off the latest in off-road technology, while the race teams registered their vehicles, signed autographs, and met with their fans. Polaris Industries led the effort as title sponsor of the UTV World Championship and Jason DeFuchia, the director of marketing for Polaris Off-Road Vehicles, was there with his team to help support the event. You know, UTV racers were kind of the up-and-coming class in most race series. But this one race, we are the entire class. So I'm really proud of what we got put on here. Really proud of the big turnout of cars, the racers, the, just the camaraderie that's out here is fantastic. Well, it's, it's cool to see somebody put on an event like this to try to grow the sport, get uh, both the short course and desert together in one place. Good for sponsors, good for spectators. Try to make it an actual event where people can travel and come and check out, see what UTV racing is all about. This is definitely the biggest UTV race of the year. It's going off and, you know, everyone's out here. Car counts over 100 for sure, so uh, I'm just having a great time. It's awesome to bring all the, uh, the people in the sport together and, uh, you know, just a one-off event like this and uh, it's, it's gonna be rad. It was clear from the turnout that the entire industry had come to rally around this new event. Thousands of enthusiasts and off-road race fans left that evening eager to see more of what was in store and the epic battles that would soon unfold. For 29-year-old Brandon Sims, UTV desert racing is more than a hobby. It's become his passion. Hailing from Prescott Valley, Arizona, Brandon has divided his time between family, work, and racing for over 15 years. My name is Brandon Sims. 
I'm from a smaller town in Arizona called Prescott Valley. Uh, I got into uh, UTV racing when I was probably about 19. I bought my first XP900, built that in my desert car, and, and I didn't really have a race team. I had a, a bunch of friends, family. Um, I brought them all together. We take it very seriously. They've always taken care of me, and uh, I couldn't do it without them. Yeah, I've been out to Laughlin a few times, uh, checked it out. There's a lot of big whoops. It's rough, rocks. It's got a little bit of every terrain. And, uh, you know, it's going to be tough keeping your car together and then also going for that top spot because I know a lot of people are going to be going for that top spot. Ever since I heard of the, you know, the World Championship, I was like, I want to do that. You know, I want to be number one on that one. I know that all the biggest teams are coming. To be able to beat them, uh, I mean, that puts you at, you know, and the number one guy, you know, if you're coming to that race and you know all the big teams are going to be there, that's a big deal, you know. Being first there on top of that podium, you know, that's, that's what I'm going for. One of the unique features of the UTV World Championship was the side-by-side -side performance family fun poker run. This open group ride allowed competitors and enthusiasts to register their own UTVs and take them out on the Desert Championship race course prior to the race. This year, we sponsored the side-by-side -side performance of Family Poker Run, which is really a cool event. It's one of the few UTV races where you can actually get out and see the course, take your family out, see what we're battling against all day long on the race course. So we thought it was a perfect fit for us to load the families up, sponsor the event, and uh, you know get out and ride for the day. It's the one event here that we get to ride at, so we're riding. The Poker Run was the first time any of the competitors had seen the newly designed Casey Folks Desert Race Course. Many agreed it was fast, dusty, and full of technical challenges. The UTV World Championship was sanctioned by the Best in the Desert Racing Association, which is America's largest and most prestigious off-road racing league. Race director Casey Folks and his team oversaw the course construction, wrote the rule book, and managed the timing, scoring, and safety of the event. Folks and his team at Best in the Desert built two race courses for the two different championship races. A hyper-technical motocross-style track full of twists, turns, and jumps for the production short course race, and a longer, more grueling high-speed course full of nasty rock, sand, whoops, and ruts for the desert race. The production short course race was designed as a modified seven-mile course that saw the competitors race for 10 laps. Their race was sponsored by Holes Racing Products and was therefore dubbed the Holes Racing Products Production Championship. The desert race course was pegged at 10 laps also, but was nearly 20 miles long, making the desert race nearly 200 miles of bone-jarring mayhem. Walker Evans, maker of some of the best shocks in the industry, sponsored the desert race, and it was dubbed the Walker Evans Racing Desert Championship. As 52 of the world's top desert UTV racers took their place on the starting grid, all of them began to think about turn one. It's a land rush start, 15 cars wide. Turn one's about two cars wide. It's probably gonna be chaos. I got a little bit of mixed emotions at this point. I mean, uh, you know, if it was starting, you know, one at a time, two at a time, I'd feel a little bit better, but I know this is gonna neck down pretty quick. Drivers were lined up according to a blind draw. As the nerves set in, for war. With the drop of the green flag, Dustin Jones of S3 Power Sports led the first high-powered pack of 15 UTVs down the straightaway and into the unforgiving Laughlin Desert. Number 1913, Brandon Sims was right on his tail, followed by 1931, Craig Scanlon, 1921, Johnny Angle. Row by row, the remaining desert racers launched off the start line. 1948, Matt Burroughs got the whole shot on row two. Mark Burnett threw a tire up on 1919 Brandon Schuler in turn one. The race was less than three minutes underway, but already there was carnage. After a clean start, Craig Scanlon lost visibility and in the dust blew a corner with his razor on its lip. As Craig and his co-driver Keith scrambled to exit their race vehicle, hit. After the close call, they were able to get their razor running back into the race. While Jones raced out front and enjoyed clean air for most of lap one, Brandon Sims stayed right with him 
and passed him eventually to take the physical lead. Baja 1000 champion Johnny Engel moved into second by the end of lap one, after passing Scanlon and Jones on course. While the top 10 competitors consisted of 1000 cc machines, Christina Perkins in her 900 cc powered Polaris Razor climbed all the way to third place. Christina would remain in the lead pack for the bulk of the race, proving that driving skill was every bit as important as power. As lap two got underway, the top 10 racers were separated by mere seconds. Sims, Angle, and Perkins remained out front, with Stackpool, Obering, and Ison right behind them. Corey Sappington and Jeremiah Staggs remained just ahead of Brandon Schuler and Logan Gastel. Number 1906 Paul Cooper and 1934 Scott Kiger began to turn up the heat and put pressure on the lead pack heading into one of the roughest parts of the entire course, the Fox Proving Grounds. This ungroomed section of deep ruts and unforgiving rock put racers and their suspensions to the test. Finding the fastest line through the proving grounds would gradually become harder and harder as the race wore on. By lap three of the Walker Evans Racing Desert Championship, it was clear that the pace to beat was a lap time of 18 minutes or less. With less than 70 miles to go, even small mistakes could add up fast. Vehicles began to succumb to the pounding race course. Michael Caffro, Ryan Laidlaw, and Michael Isom all experienced mechanical failures and were forced to retire early. Michael Stackpool dropped the hammer and passed Christina Perkins to take third place overall. Meanwhile, Scott Kiger got around Corey Sappington on lap three, moving into ninth. Inaugural UTV World Championship was sponsored by Polaris as part of their commitment to off-road racing and connecting UTV enthusiasts with the best that competition has to offer. Polaris came out in full force with their Polaris Experience Tour, which lets hundreds of off-road fans get in brand new Razor XP 1000s and test drive them on a custom-built two-mile course. So we're out here in Laughlin, Nevada, giving consumer demo rides here, where Polaris is the title sponsor for the uh, UTV World Championships out here. First time it's been here, it's been great, the town loves us, we've been uh, super busy with these demo rides. If you're over 18 or with a valid driver's license, come in here with some pants and a long sleeve t-shirt, helmet, goggles, close toed shoe, and you're ready to ride. The feedback with these cars have been great. You know, we came out with the with the 1000 a couple years back with some Walker Evans shock packages. We started to highlight what Fox can do now with these internal bypass shocks, and the response has been just great. Everyone's friendly too, is what's nice. Everyone, you know, you can walk up to anybody and ask them a question. They're going to tell you everything that they know about it, and then possibly even go show you how to go do it if you if you need be. So that's what's nice about it. Great car. Just, I mean, I've got the 800S, I love it. This is even better. Justin Lambert is no stranger to off-road racing and the rigors of off-road fabrication. Hailing from Bakersfield, California, he is the founder of Cognito Motorsports, an industry leader in the manufacture and installation of innovative lift kits, suspension systems, and steering components. I'm Justin Lambert with Cognito Motorsports from Bakersfield, California. Today I'm out in the desert testing for the UTV World Championship, dialing in some shocks, dialing in some suspension, making sure tires are, are where we want them. Started racing go-karts when I was about six years old. Since day one, grew up around my dad building drag cars, drag boats, racing engines. So, you know, I really grew up around racing with my dad. We started racing back in, a, uh, in 2010 in a Kawasaki Terex. That was a pretty good platform at that point. The Polaris Razor just up the game. Every year they were upping the game, so we decided to change over to the Polaris Razor platform. My race car is a purpose-built desert race car to race with the highest level of competition in UTV desert racing. We've taken the Razor platform, the XP1000 platform, and basically read the rule book front to back for best in the desert and score. And we made sure that we're abiding by all the rules and doing everything that we could to make this car the most competitive that it could be. 
I've never raced at Laughlin. All I know is what I've heard. I've heard Laughlin is a very rough course. I hear that it's raced on a lot. Um, it's gonna be pretty tore up. I think by 100 miles in, it's gonna be a race of attrition. This is off-road racing uh, on any given day. Anybody can win. Fast guy can break something. Anything can happen. You just never know. The prize is probably the biggest prize that's ever been at a UTV race. To win a Polaris Razor XP1000 is clutch. To win that first inaugural race for the World Championship would be huge for Cognito. On lap four of the Walker Evans Racing Desert Championship, the punishing course continued to take its toll on the racers. Meanwhile, Brandon Sims, Johnny Angle, and Michael Stackpool held down the top three positions. Christina Perkins stayed close on Stackpool's heels, continued to put pressure on the lead pack. Brandon Schuler, a six-time Best of the Desert UTV champion, moved from seventh to fifth on lap four. Jeff Obring fell off the mark and moved from fifth to eighth. Scott Kiger slid into seventh with consistent driving. Pit strategy is a major part of the desert race. Knowing when to stop for fuel and tires could mean the difference between a podium finish and a podium. Paul Cooper in the number 1906 Polaris Razor came into the pits at the end of lap four in ninth place overall. Paul was driving a smart race, incrementally picking up his speed from lap to lap waiting for his competitors to push themselves and their car. On lap five, Craig Scanlon, Jeff Obering, and Mario Santiago all dealt with major mechanical gremlins. They would each finish out the race with a respectable five laps on their belts. What was one of the trickiest UTV desert race courses in recent Brandon Sims continued his dominating run on his fifth lap and remained out front first place overall. On average, he was an incredible two to three minutes faster than his closest competitors. Johnny Angle, meanwhile, suffered a flat tire and fell back to fourth behind Stackpool and Perkins. Brandon Schuler remained in fifth place, rounding out the top five. On lap six, Johnny Angle shot up to third place overall past Perkins. He had made a massive comeback lost time at five. Scott Kiger in the 1934 Polaris Razor picked up another position moving into sixth behind Schuler. And Paul Cooper picked up two spots moving from ninth to seventh. Right behind Cooper in eighth place overall, Justin Lampton. Justin had remained steady and picked up his pace on laps four and five. He started to pay off. It's lap seven of 10, the Walker Evans Racing Desert Championship. And of the 52 UTVs that left the start line, only 30 remain. The agony of suffering mechanical issues on the normal course is hanging in the air. After being in the mix all morning, Michael Stackpool fell by the wayside, along with Mark Burnett and an astounding eight other competitors. Brandon Sims, who took the lead off the start line and has run a flawless race all day, remains out front. Behind Brandon, Christina Perkins moved into second place in her 1946 Polaris Razor, followed by Brandon Schuler, Johnny Engel, Paul Cooper. Brian Bush in the 1911 Polaris Razor has quietly climbed his way into the top six. Though the overall lead remains unchanged, the battle for second and third has changed hands a dozen times. As the racers head deep into lap eight, the tensions of making a final push for the finish start to surface. Just as things seem to be going well for six-time UTV champ Brandon Schuler, he experienced problems and fell out of contention. Johnny Angle was right in the mix and slid into third just behind Christina Perkins. Paul Cooper hung on to fourth, and Vey and Bush just behind him. 
By lap nine, Brandon Sims built a commanding four-minute lead over second place Perkins. Perkins, in turn, built a four-minute gap over Baja 1000 winner Johnny Engel. Paul Cooper in the 1906 Polaris Razor climbed to within one minute of Johnny. And with experienced racers Brian Bush and Scott Tiger right behind him, there was no room for a single mistake. On the final lap of the race, Brandon Sims in the 1913 Lone Star Racing Polaris Razor kept a steady pace and held his four-minute lead over 1946 Christina Perkins in her Cognito Motorsports Polaris Razor. Christina stayed ahead of the 1921 UTV Inc. Razor of Johnny Ankle and finished an impressive second place overall in her 900cc machine. Although Johnny finished ahead of Paul Cooper physically, once their start time differential of 90 seconds was factored, Paul would take third place overall in his 1906 Baja Designs Razor. For Brandon Sims, however, this was a moment that would last a lifetime. After jockeying for position on the opening lap, he took a commanding lead and never looked back. As Sims crossed the finish line, he was greeted by UTV Underground founder and CEO Joey DiGiovanni to celebrate the first overall victory in the desert UTV race. You picked a good one to win, didn't you? <laughs> oh, you got that monkey off your back, right? Your first desert race win? First oh. desert, on my own. Not, not part of a team, but yeah, it's my first desert win. Dude, you just won the UTV World Championship. What did we talk about before this race? <laughs> this is the champions of the champions, the desert champions. Does that make me a champion? You're a champion, brother. You're a champion. Congratulations, you got a brand new player's razor coming. Brandon Sims became the first Walker Evans Racing Desert Champion at the UTV World Championship. 35-year-old Bo Barron is a six-time production UTV and ATV short course champion who began riding motorcycles at the age of 13. Bo is a threat and spends almost every weekend either competing or riding with friends. I uh, got into UTV racing about four years ago. Uh, I borrowed a loaner unit and uh, won a race in Saboba, California. Yeah, I started off racing bikes real young. Dirt bikes, I always wanted to be a dirt bike kid. Got into the pro ranks and kind of got pushed aside and I just kept doing it, you know, out of my own pocket, never really had the funding for it. I shortly got into ATV racing after that and that kind of carried me on along with my testing at Honda until now I'm, I'm racing UTVs. UTV racing and ATV dirt bike racing, it's all pretty similar as far as being able to pick lines and stuff like that and uh, hit the jumps the same speed basically just with different form, you know. Short course is just like motocross, I mean in a sense because it's, it's real fast, it's very aggressive. You start off off the line and try to get to the first corner as fast as you possibly can because it's, it's off of one row and you're just trying to get the job done and that's it. You basically moto a tank of gas and it's over. Yeah, I have a Holtz built car. You know, I've known Holtz for a while and he's always done a good job with ATV stuff. Kind of transferred over in a relationship, you know, he builds a bitching car. I mean, everything about it, dude, he puts so much effort into detail, it makes everything turn out cherry. The UTV World Championship is a great idea because it's gonna bring all the guys from the desert and all the guys from short course together and let them hash it out. I think the hardest part is to, to get your equipment to stick together. You hit guys in the first corner, there's a lot of battling going on, and then just trying to make it to the finish line. You know, we pump up these cars so that they can win races, and when you do that, you know, you alter some things, and then you're looking at a possible DNF, but you know what, at the end of the day, if you want to win, you've got to do it. As the dust settled from the inaugural Walker Evans Racing Desert Championship, the Youth Razor 170 Production Championship about to begin. This class was made up of kids ages 12 and under and showcased their driving skills and their Polaris Razor 170s in front of a massive crowd of fans. The Youth Razor 170 race featured the same land rush start as the Desert and Production Short Course Championship races, giving the kids a taste of what the pros experienced. As the Razors launched off the start line, Seth Quintero Magnum Off-Road Polaris Razor 170 took the whole shot, never looked back. Right behind Seth was the number 907 of Lincoln Leverton, 
followed by 80 Dallas Gonzalez and Monster Energy Razor 170. While Seth Quintero, Casey Sims, and Jacob Peter all battled each other for the top three spots. Aiden Hayman, Dallas Gonzalez, Zach and Max Anderson all made chase. These amazing young racers battled for over 30 minutes, competing a total of 17 laps on the modified youth race course. In the end, it was Seth Quintero with the 103 Magnum Off-Road Polaris Razor who took the win in the first ever UTV World Championship Youth Razor 170 race. I'm definitely sticking around. <laughs> I hope I can make a career out of this. Nearly 70 of the world's most talented short course UTV racers lined up for the Holes Racing Products Production Championship race. Just like the desert race, their start order was drawn at random and they lined up in rows of 15. The field was set to battle for 10 laps around a technically challenging seven mile course. And when the green flag rock, the most exciting land rush start of the day had the crowd on their feet. Bryce Lamont and his 907 Magnum Off-Road Polaris Razor grabbed the hope shot in row one and led the hungry pack of UTVs through turn one with 952 Ronnie Anderson right on his heels. RJ Anderson, Mitch Guthrie Jr., Ryan Piplick, Josh Frederick, and Bo Barron all battled for position early on as the field slowly became unlocked. 10 vehicles suffered mechanical issues due to driver error and the unforgiving rocky and dusty race course the first five minutes. Bryce Lamont tied Robert Van Beekham for the fastest time on lap one at just over seven minutes, setting the pace for the rest of the field. Corbin Leverton moved into third towards the end of lap one Ronnie Anderson sat just in front of Joey Hyde, rounding out the top five. At 70 miles total, the production championship was designed to test the driver's patience and equipment. But by lap two, the rate of attrition had already doubled. Ronnie Anderson, Chris Chen, Cody Miller were all taken out. 907 Bryce Lamont and 964 Robert Van Beekham paced each other in first and second place. While 934 Corey Leverton, 985 Joey Heyer, and 922 Cody Bradbury closed out the top five. Jacob Shaw, meanwhile, in his Magnum Off-Road Polaris Razor, stayed within striking distance. 954 Bo Barron, 958 Ryan Holes, Jagged X Racing Blake Vanderloo all stayed within a minute of the lead pack. By lap three, the course began to deteriorate. Both the dust and the sun became a factor. As visibility became an issue, eight more competitors were forced to retire. Bryce Lamont and Robert Van Beekham continued to battle in first and second, while Cody Bradbury and Jacob Shaw fought in the second and third position. Brandon Sims, who won the Walker Evans Desert Championship only hours earlier, was also entered at the production short course race and began passing cars in his 913 Polaris Razor. 30 minutes into the race on lap four, Bryce Lamont suffered a catastrophic mechanical failure and was forced to pull off the race course. Bryce had led the entire race all morning Robert Van Beekham and his 964 Polaris Razor slid into first overall. Meanwhile, Jacob Shaw passed Cody Bradbury and moved into second place. Cody had mechanical issues on lap four and fell back to ninth place. Richie Latz, Larry Job and Brian Southwick all had strong performances on lap four. 
Jason Merrill and his 948 Wolfpack Polaris Razor drove hard and remained within striking distance of the lead pack, as did Mitch Guthrie Jr. and his UTV Underground sponsored Polaris Ace. Mitch Guthrie Jr. started racing at the age of 11 in the off-road kart class. At 15, he raced his first season in a Polaris Razor XP900 in the 2012 Works Series in the Production 1000 class. The following year, Mitch dominated the Works Production 1000 Series with five wins and six podium finishes in nine rounds of racing. He is considered one of the most seasoned, up-and-coming UTV drivers of his generation and has helped his father, Mitch Guthrie Sr., win multiple rock crawling championships. I'm Mitch Guthrie. I'm from Glendora, California. We're out here in Johnson Valley. We got my works race car behind me and we're gonna go shake it down. The player's platform's awesome and we're super stoked to have them on board with our team, you know. We're basically a family team. We work out of our garage and we have a pretty good setup going and it's been working out for us. And uh, my main sponsor is my dad and my parents and family. So it's pretty cool having such a great support behind me. You know, I basically do everything on our cars, building them and prepping them. So everything my dad showed me, I put into what I do and uh, it's been working out well. You know, when you take a Polaris Razor out of the box, basically you can bolt on some things and you're ready to race. Coming into this, it's, you know, we're hearing over a hundred racers out there. We're debuting our new car, so all we want is a win, you know, uh, and that Polaris Razor that they're giving away. So I think I have a pretty big advantage. You know, like I said, we're debuting the new car, and I think that thing's gonna work awesome. And then, you know, the series where I come from, I'm good at the land rest start. You know, I've been getting good hole shots, and uh, the car's been working good. I feel like we have our setups dialed in now, and we've got the cars basically as perfect as they can be, so uh, I'm pretty confident going into it. The competition is insane, you know, hearing over 100 people are coming and these are the fastest UTV drivers out there, uh, it definitely makes it tough and, you know, everyone wants to win as much as I do, so that's what makes it hard is battling with those guys. You never know who's going to win, but I'm definitely going to be going for it out there. It's fun for me, you know, these things are fun to drive. They can do anything you want them to. I mean, we're hitting 100 foot step ups and, uh, you know, you land and it's comfortable. So it's pretty cool knowing that you can be so comfortable in these things and they're so much fun, you know, so much power, so much suspension, just everything together makes it such a fun ride. And, you know, I just go out there and race. And I mean, we're racing, we're competitive, but I'm also out there having fun, just having a good time racing with all my friends. By the halfway point of the Holes Racing Products Production Championship, the field of nearly 70 world-class UTV racers has been cut in half. Early race leaders Bryce Lamont and Robert Van Beekham, as well as seasoned veterans of the sport like Ronnie Anderson, all suffered mechanical issues while battling on the grueling Laughlin race course. Jacob Shaw, meanwhile, passed five competitors and remained out front. Richie Latz and Larry Job held down second and third place. With Ryan Holes, Brian Southwick, Mickey Thomas, Bo Barron, and Nick Templeton all close behind a massive chase pack. The margin for lap times shrank to less than 30 seconds as the field charged hard past the halfway point. On lap six, Larry Job and Kip Michaels fell by the wayside. Number 910 Richie Lance moved into second overall, right in front of 944 Mickey Thomas in his Lone Star Racing Polaris Razor. Ryan Holes and Brian Southwick battled in fourth and fifth position. Meanwhile, Blake Vanderloo, Mitch Guthrie Jr., Brandon Sims, 
Josh Frederick, and Jason Merrill all continue to put pressure on the leader. The production championship race course was brutal. Of the 68 UTVs that started the race, a mere 36 remained on course by the seventh lap. As the sun began to set, it became extremely challenging for the racers to keep their pace without the risk of damaging their machines. It was also a challenge to keep track of the race leaders with the staggered land rush start, there were timing differentials to consider when calculating the positions. Many drivers sat physically in one position, but on corrected time, were actually much further ahead. One such racer was Brandon Sims, who, after winning the morning's Walker Evans Desert Championship, found himself in the top five of the production. Nearly 70 of the world's top off-road UTV racers have been battling in a savage seven-mile race course for over an hour. The dust, heat, and sun have all played a factor in retiring more than half of the field with mechanical issues. Two of the early race leaders have fallen by the wayside, and privateer Jacob Shaw and his 991 Magnum off-road Polaris Razor has led the last four laps uncontested. Richie Latz, Mickey Thomas, Bo Barron, Brandon Sims, Ray Bullock, and Mitch Guthrie Jr. remained locked in the lead pack, waiting for any mistake to improve their positions. Josh Frederick, meanwhile, in his 930 Holes Racing Products Polaris Razor, climbed up the ranks again to move into ninth. Josh suffered a catastrophic injury to his back while competing in ATV racing several years ago and lost the use of his legs. Never one to sit on the sidelines, he made a strong recovery and had a custom Polaris Razor built with hand controls so that he could continue to compete. Josh's performance on this day, sitting in the top 10 among the world-class elite UTV racers, was nothing short of astounding. Mark Burnett emerged on lap eight in sixth place. Mark had quietly climbed his way up the ranks while others pushed too hard broke their machines during the epic contest. Blake Vanderloo sat just behind Mark in seventh. Blake is the co-driver for the Jagged X race team and competes in the King of the Hammers rock crawling series as well. As the racers head out on lap nine, they all knew it was time to make a move for the podium. Top 10 competitors were separated by less than 90 seconds on corrected time. The do or die. Jacob Shaw remained out front with Richie Latz, Bo Barron, and Brandon Sims just behind him. Ray Bullock and Mickey Thomas held down fifth and sixth place. Lap 9 saw the eventual demise of Mark Burnett and Scott Kiger, who, after grinding it out all day, finally fell off pace with mechanical issues. As the final minutes of lap 10 ticked down, it was clear the course had taken its toll on the field. More than half of the 68 UTVs that started succumbed to mechanical issues. Mark Burnett, Larry Job, Colton Moore, Ryan Van Beekham, Brian Carr, George Hamill, Cody Raiders, Jeremy Merrill, and Craig Scanlon all failed to make it to the finish. After almost two hours of continuous battle on the hot and dusty championship race course, privateer racer Jacob Shaw took the checkered flag and the grand prize, a brand new 2015 Polaris XP1000 racer. Jacob was crowned the winner of the Holes Racing Products Production Championship celebrate with family and friends at the finish line. Jacob Shaw, you are the winner of the 2015 first annual <laughs> Polaris Razor UTV World Championship. 
awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm speechless, dude. You give me your champion, Richie Lance finished second, followed by Bo Barron and his 954 Polaris Razor. Brandon Sims, who won the Walker Evans Desert Championship only hours earlier, finished in impressive fourth place. The Polaris Razor UTV World Championship held their awards ceremony at the official host hotel, Harris Laughlin, overlooking the beautiful Colorado River that night. Over 100,000 in cash and prizes were handed out to the winners of the different classes that competed at the race. One special award that was given out was the Warfighter Made Perseverance Award. This award was created by the Warfighter Made Organization, who helps disabled veterans by adapting and customizing combat wounded veterans' vehicles. This year's Warfighter Made Perseverance Award went to Donna Ellsworth who was seen pushing her ATV for over four miles to reach the finish line. In addition to giving trophies out to the top three finishers in every class, UTVUnderground.com also gave away the Hard Charger Award, which went to Josh Fredericks for his outstanding performance in the production championship race. This was Josh's first major competition since recovering from his back injury, and he epitomized the spirit of the Hard Charge ninth place overall finish. The Polaris Razor UTV World Championship presented by UTVUnderground.com was a huge success. Every professional UTV racer in both desert and short course racing came to compete in the event. All of the major manufacturers and parts builders were there as well. Thousands of off-road racing fans and UTV enthusiasts showed up to watch the racing and Polaris put hundreds of off-road enthusiasts behind the wheel with their Polaris Experience Tour. Everyone agreed this event was huge for the industry and will be a mainstay for many, many years to come. Congratulations to all the racers and winners of the Walker Evans Desert Championship, the Youth 170 Championship, and the Holes Racing Products Production Championship. The Polaris UTV World Championship will return to Lofton, Nevada, February 17th through the 21st of 2016. For more information, visit utvunderground.com.